and let them out. We need. I think we need a congressional investigation of the prison, both in in Texas at Fort Worth and in Terre Haute. What kind of medical attention did my father receive? You've got an elderly patient in your care or prisoner. What medical attention did he get? Because you know we're all talking about turning over health care to the government, Obamacare. Well, the government is in charge of health care in a prison. And this is what happens when the government is in charge of anything. And it gets worse and worse, and everybody passes the buck at every level. There's a breakdown. It, in fact, I was thinking Obamacare earlier. I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, we know it's hell in England. We know it's bad in Canada. We know government-run health care is a disaster, and now we're going under it. Uh, and, and then now the left is so empowered, they're now coming out for pedophilia. I mean, these people are and, insane. But, and think about how government works. I asked the people, why does he have to be chained to the bed? Well, because it's not, it's not comfortable to be lying in a bed when you're handcuffed to it. And I said, well, can you at least take the cuffs off? No, those are regulations, because he might escape. How is my father, 87, can barely walk and is almost completely blind? How is he going to overpower the two armed well, guards? Well, see, that's the centralization. The that's the centralization where I had grape jelly, I wasn't thinking about it, a farmer's market in Omaha. I was bringing it back to my mom. They find it. They interrogate me for 30 minutes. Why do I have this? How dare me? You know, I'm lucky that I'm allowed to leave. And I, with a straight face, I said, with a straight face, my grape jelly's bad? You know, this is a joke. And they said, well, sir, it's our regulation. See, they don't give these people any leeway for common sense. They're like robots. Now, no, they can't think for themselves. They're like, well, if we take the handcuffs off your off your dad, well, we have to do it for everybody. No, you don't. You got an 87-year-old guy that can barely walk and is legally blind. Take the cuffs off him. He's not going anywhere. Yeah, if it's I mean, a 30-year-old convicted pedophile, child rapist, chain him up to the wall and punch him in the stomach. I mean, I'm being sarcastic, but obviously a blind guy with cancer, you don't need to chain him down. No, and especially when you have two armed guards. Where is he going to go? There's no, I mean, it, it is insane, but this is government. This is how government operates. This is how government functions. That's why you want to absolutely limit government to its smallest possible capacity. That's what the founding fathers tried to do with the Constitution. My father tried to stand up for that document and force the government to abide by it because the courts have let the government get away with murder. And in this case, they are getting away with murder because they're murdering my dad. Well, I know it must be hard for you. Uh, did you tell him folks on the outside are rooting for him and that people are reading his book more than I ever? I did. I did tell him. I told him I was going to go on your show and I was going to talk about it. You know, he you know, he wants to get the word out there. He wants people to understand what's going on in this country. And I tell you, I've never seen him or listened to him more negative about what he thinks is going to happen economically. I mean, he is really, really worried. Tell us what your dad has to say. He's a smart guy. Tell us. Well, you know, he didn't he couldn't say much because he's losing his short term memory. So he, 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 a lot of the things he just kept saying to me over and over again without any recollection that he had already told me. But he is very concerned about the financial position of the U.S. economy and what's going to happen when the dollar collapses or the Fed has to or the Congress has to admit that they can't make Social Security payments. They can't make any of these payments. And there's, you know, riots and food shortages and energy blackouts. I mean, he's really, really nervous about the civil unrest that he sees developing in the United States as a result of this this problem blowing up. And I think, you know, we can get in a later segment or next one and talk about, you know, what's going on in the economy and the Fed. Sure, and, well, know, I skipped the break. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. I'm not going to even play the clips. You're on record at Europac.com. Uh, you were on record being criticized in the national media for saying they will not raise interest rates. Uh, and now they haven't raised interest rates. Break that down. And the latest since you were on a month ago. Well, first of all, the important thing is the excuse, right? Because everybody is still buying the lie. This is part of the show. So Janet Yellen came out and said, OK, like we were going to raise interest rates, but now we're not because of China. Like we're worried about these problems overseas. And so we're not going to raise rates. And the media buys it. Right. But that's not the truth. Janet Yellen is lying. I said this in the beginning that they are going to come up with one excuse after another. And it doesn't even matter what the excuse is. It's whatever makes the most sense at the time. Whatever is the most convenient, that's what they're going to blame it on. Because look what Janet Yellen said, the same, the same playbook. She said, we're not raising rates now, but we may raise them in October. Well, that's in six weeks. Well, if the Fed is so worried about the problems in China, they're 
They're not going to go away in the next six weeks. So why not say we're not raising rates in October either? Because that's not their playbook. The script that they've been operating under is pretend we're going to raise interest rates in the future, but just don't raise them now. And the whole reason for this is to make believe that there's a real recovery and that they're confident they can raise rates. And they come up with one excuse after another why they don't raise them, because if they ever did raise them, it would pierce the recovery myth because the air would come out of the bubble that much faster. We'd be right back in recession. We'd have another financial crisis and they'd be doing QE4 and they would look like fools. And to show how disconnected they are, even the Fed head uh, up in Omaha thinks they're really going to raise it in the next few months to show how the New York Fed is keeping the other Fed groups out of the loop. Break down how that whole group works, because people think it's just one unified Federal Reserve. They don't understand how the real board works. Well, you have various member banks. You have different people that are part of the Federal Open Market Committee, so they all have a voice. But I think it's easy to dissent if you know that the majority is going to make sure that your dissenting opinion doesn't actually happen, right? So it's easy to say, hey, I think we should raise rates when you know everybody else is going to make sure that rates don't go up. Right. So then you could look like you're the responsible one, uh, but everybody else is preventing the rate hike. But I'm sure even the guys that say they want to raise rates, if it came right down to it and their voice was the vote was the deciding vote, they don't want to raise rates because that will expose the myth. Sure. Right? The Fed. The Fed wants to pretend they can raise rates because theoretically raising rates is a sign that everything is better. Right. But they want to pretend everything is better without proving. Sure, that it's so not. you accurately hit the nail on the head and you told cnbc and we, and we put the article up there's video you said uh, just last week you said i predicted what the fed would do correctly now i'm going to predict what the stocks are going to do let's get into that but i actually never said anything about what the stock market was going to do on that interview but i do believe that the sure stock well that's market... their headline let me give you the headline then so you know we'll put it yeah. back on screen uh it's uh shift i'm right about the fed i'll be right about stocks so what's that about yeah, I don't know where they got the headline on stocks, but you know, the only thing I did say is that I thought that the stock market needed QE4 in order to not fall, which is what of I course. believe. I think I think that the, just keeping interest rates at zero is not enough to support the market. This market is really propped up. It's a huge bubble. It needs air. It needs QE4 to stop from deflating. And it needs the Fed to keep buying the bonds, right? Well, absolutely. That, well, that is QE4, right? It yeah. needs to, the Fed has to expand its balance sheet if it wants to stop a bear market. And I believe it does want to stop a bear market. It's not going to admit that. It's not going to say that's the reason. But it, you know, it also wants to prop up the banks. It wants to prop up the real estate market. You know, this reminds me a lot. What's going on now? You go back to 2006. I'm going to put together another video of some of these clips again of me talking about the housing bubble which was so incredibly obvious to me and should have been obvious to everybody, but it wasn't you know, what was going on and what was going to happen when that bubble burst. And it's the same thing all over again. This is so incredibly obvious, yet everybody is oblivious to the problem and how it's going to be resolved. And maybe, I don't know, is the Fed this dumb or do they know it now, and are they just lying to cover it up? Sure, let me ask this question. It's the classic damn if you do, damn if you don't. We're going to break in one minute, but try to answer it now or after. Explain to people how it's bad if we do keep doing the QE, but how it's bad if we don't, but then it's probably better to go ahead and raise interest rates. Explain that when we come back. Peter Schiff's okay. our guest. And when I know we got phone calls about the Pope. I'm going to work you in. We can get his take on that as well. His answer is wealth redistribution. Uh, his answer is class warfare when he's exempt from taxes and above the law. And they've got headlines about Obama basking in the aura. I mean, I'm going to throw up here in a minute. I mean, I, this is truly sickening to have a Marxist pope. I mean, we are in deep trouble. I mean, that's all I can say is we are in deep trouble. I mean, if you think the economy's bad now, wait till they bring in more government control, more taxes. This is really bad news. Stay with us. Peter Schiff's our guest. I know we got loaded phones to talk about the Pope, Desi, uh, and uh, folks like Dave, Matt, and others. We'll get to those in a little segment where we talk about the Pope and uh, get Peter Schiff's take on that. I know he's an economics guy, but he joins us for a full hour, so it's important to get his take on other things like we did about his father in prison uh, because we're more than just a financial show or a news show. We get into the humanity of what's happening. We're going to go back to our guest uh, from Euro Pacific Capital. The website, of course, is on screen, europac.com. Uh, briefly, 
I have storable food because I know society can completely unravel and collapse. I'm working to stop that from happening. We could turn the free market back on at any time and I believe reverse a lot of this. I'll ask Schiff his take on that in a moment. But regardless, I've got high quality storable foods and we only bring you sponsors that are the very best. That's why for four or five years we've had My Patriot Supply. They started six, seven years ago and have become in the top three in the country because of low pricing, high quality. We have the entire line of My Patriot Supply, their latest discounts, they're changed every week at InfoWarsStore.com. When you purchase it there, it helps support this broadcast. I want to thank you for that. But we're now private labeling the exact same food, but they're able to give us even lower price through InfoWarsSelect.com. That's also at InfoWarsStore.com. It's the lowest price they've ever offered in their history. I've had their CEO on two weeks ago. They've extended it one week because it was going to end in just a couple days. They're extending it till October 1st. And then this introductory lowest price ever on the highest quality storable foods will end. You can call and ask questions about it or you can go to InfoWarsSelect.com or InfoWarsStore.com and click on the storable food area or call toll free 888-253-3139. The elites are storing food. They've got emergency seed banks. They're digging in. That's even in the London Guardian and the New York Times. I'm not saying everything's going to collapse. I didn't say Jade Helm would be martial law. The media makes that up. I'm saying this is important insurance to have, just like car insurance, probably more important. And whether it's high-quality uh, non-GMO seeds you can buy at InfoWarsStore.com or high-quality water filters or the live straw, you name it, the very best stuff, just to have peace of mind, is there. Whatever we use, what we research, what we promote, that's what we sell. So InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsSelect.com to find all of that. Uh, some of our amazing nutraceuticals, uh, Child Ease is back. A classic formula put up by one of the biggest manufacturers in the country for 20 years. The national uh, bestseller. We simply tweaked it, added some stuff, and have our own formula, Child Ease. Four-ounce bottle, very affordable, really will relax and focus your children uh, we, we almost called it Focus Child because that's what it really does. Being focused makes them calmer. And my kids use it. I use it. Adults can use it. It's back in stock. 20% off DNA Force, our flagship product, and 20% off Brain Force for one week only. Those are the new specials at InfoWarsLife.com. Uh, going back to Peter Schiff of Europac.net, Europac.com. Again, billions under management predicted the, the many of the bubbles implosions, predicted if you don't know who he is, most of you do, the situation with the housing bubble uh, before it happened in 2008, uh, has predicted that we would see a worldwide uh, economic uh, recession and a depression in the last few years. We're now entering into that. Most areas of the world are in a depression or in conflict. We're not seeing that yet here because we're like, islands are just mountains in the ocean. And as water rises, it covers other islands that aren't as high, but the water's rising. The question is, how high will it rise? So, Peter, that was my question before the break. Uh, for the folks that just joined us, I'll recap it. You say we're in trouble if we continue QE. We're not in, uh, we're in trouble if we get rid of it, but we should get rid of it. What do you see coming down the road as they don't get rid of it? And why is it better to get rid of it and raise interest rates? Well, you know, it's just like a drug addict. I may use this analogy a lot, but, you know, if you're addicted to drugs and you make a decision that you're going to kick that habit and you check yourself into a rehabilitation center, right, your life is going to change for in the short run and it's going to get a whole lot worse, right? Apparently, I, or I guess if you're doing drugs, you're having a good time. That's maybe why you're taking drugs. You feel great. You're high. But if you make a decision that you want to uh, kick that habit and you go to rehab, now you're going through withdrawal, right? You're not, you know, going to club med, you're not going to have a good time. You're going to have to, you know, adjust to a normal life. And so that means a big change in the way you live your life. Uh, but it's better than continuing to do drugs and then maybe being dead in a hospital bed of, of an overdose. And, and that's where we are. You know, we've got this phony economy that's propped up on the, this monetary heroin and we need to stop. We need to, you know, we, we need to go into economic rehab. That's what would happen if the Fed raised rates. It wouldn't be fun, but it would be a positive step. It would be a, a healing experience as we restructure the economy. What would that look like? It would mean that we had to stop spending money, tear up our credit cards, live within our means. Asset prices would come down like stocks and real estate. A lot of banks Yeah, that's would the fail. good part is that is that what we need would get cheaper. Well, yeah, well, the cost of living would go down. Hold, look, 
um, home ownership is at the lowest it's been since 1967. It's like a 48 year low. But if you take out the older people, for young people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, it's never been this low. Why? Because real estate prices are too high. Well, if the government lets the bubble pop, real estate prices will plunge, and a lot of people who are renting might be able to afford to 